Hi, and welcome to another narration presented by yours truly, Cryptid's Roost. Please be so kind as to throw punch the like button and smack the arse of the subscription button as well. And remember to choke hold that notification bell and then select all. That way you'll receive all notifications each time I upload a new video. And by subscribing, you will also be the first to see all of our new spooky creepypasta stories. I would like to reach out and say a huge thank you to those of you who have been supporting Cryptid Roost financially with your sponsorship. We pray the good Lord replenishes you abundantly and to those of you who will later on. We pray the good Lord bless you as you do so. And also a huge thank you to everyone for always supporting the channel with the likes, comments and shares as well. It is all very much appreciated. God bless you all. And why not hashtag cryptids roost in your comments. And happy Halloween everyone. So grab your coffee, sit back and enjoy the show. And don't forget, where fear is, happiness is not. Hell's Bells This awesome story is written by Cryptic Wonder, a wonderful author over on Reddit. And if you'd like to see more of his works, the Reddit link to his profile will be below in the description. The old church sat in the forest for centuries, long abandoned by the flock that once inhabited it. A shell of its former glory. It was carved from thick stone that still held up remarkably well. Thick growths of vines lent it their stability, spreading up and across the gothic structure. They stretched to the once stained glass windows and around every pillar that held up the great bell tower from above. They clutched it firmly in place like some long buried secret that was to be kept even in death. The small cemetery that lay beside it was a mass of bed of weeds itself. Wild plants of varying sizes took up residence above the long forgotten souls as they slept quietly beneath. The dozen or so markers that still remained jutted from the ground like broken crooked teeth standing watch over the building that once served them, ever vigilant to the place that time forgot. Peace was a heavy blanket that shrouded this place. Whatever the reason for its desertion, whatever the alignment the site once stood for, nature was doing what it did best, silently easing its burden from the world. It was a Saturday night and the gang of hoodlums was at the arcade, as usual, blowing whatever money they scrounged up or stole on video games. Kevin, who was the unofficial leader of the bunch, was the oldest at 20 years old. He was tall and muscular, usually using these features to his advantage. He and the others that accompanied had a reputation around town. Get in their way and you'd be sorry. The twins, Butch and Hope, were Kevin's younger siblings. Fineless little weasels they were, and while they lacked their big brother's size, they were just as mean. Picking fun at weaker victims was their favourite game, and they would team up on the unfortunate person feeding off each other's cruelty. Their entire family was spoiled, and their two friends that hung around them, Stephen and Tamika, were like maggots that crawled around their destructive activities. They would steal and sell bikes from children, force people to do things no person should have to do, and once they even shot a cat in the bottom with an airsoft gun, just to make the owner cry. For the most part, Kevin and his gang were around, people knew to stay away. Calling the police was useless as they wouldn't be doing anything provable by the time an officer arrived. 
even if they were, it wasn't as though they would go away for very long. They would be back all too soon, meaner than ever with a personal vendetta against you. Maybe an hour went by and their collective money was just about spent. They had already bullied the change out of everyone who was previously here and were starting to get bored anyway. They were about to go find Boo's money when Julie Mizrachi stepped through the door. She was in the 10th grade and the few that still went to school knew she was a mouse of a girl very quiet and usually kept to herself. She wasn't ugly by any means, however the lack of makeup, big round glasses and her aversion to anything contemporary had long since branded her a loser. Julie herself knew the grief the group of punks brought, as it was her cat that was shot last spring. She managed to get him to the vet in time and after a very costly surgery, he survived, though he was never the same after that. She didn't see them however, as she walked over to the quarter machine to feed a few dollars. As the coin spilled out the bottom, the sound brought Kevin's attention over to his new prey. Hey, check it out! It's Julie, Miss Ritchie, he said smacking the back of his hand against Butch. Ha ha, perfect timing, let's go say hello, he replied, shooting a wink to his sister. The five went over and surrounded her, cutting off any hope of an exit. She looked up, noticing the shift in the atmosphere and swallowed hard. Hey Julie, how you doing? I like what you did with your makeup, said Hope. I'm good, thank you, but I don't wear any, she replied with a nervous laugh. Ha <laughs> ha, no, duh, you stupid bitch. Is there something I can do for you? Well, since you asked, you see, we're all out of money for the machines. We were kind of hoping you would be nice enough to share with us. As Julie struggled with how to respond, Butch reached out a hand to hers. He took most of her quarters and spilled the rest on the floor. The others greedily snatched them up, leaving the girl dumbstruck. Yeah, no problem, she simply replied. That's a good start, but we're going to need more than that. What else can you do for us? asked Kevin. He stepped imposingly close and leant his face down to hers with an ugly sneer. She backed up and bumped into Stephen. I, uh, I guess I have some more money I can give you. Ha ha! She looks like she's going to start crying, Butch commented in the back. Julie pulled out a Velcro wallet and searched through it for a five dollar bill. Kevin saw the large wad inside and casually reached in to pull it all out. Hey, that's my... She started, but Kevin shot her a mean look, then resumed counting out the bills. In total, there was seventy-eight dollars that he stuffed into his pants, tossing the now empty wallet to the ground. Thanks, you're such a good friend, he said, walking away. They all gave her a sarcastic thanks as they made their way by, Tamika giving her a hard shove as she bent down to pick up her now useless wallet. She tumbled to the carpet and began to cry, all of them watching on and laughing before resuming their fun. Butch's gaze lingered a bit longer than the others, however, as he soaked up her pain. He suddenly got a sadistic idea to prolong it. He ran over to Hope, who had just begun a new game of Galactica, and pat her on the shoulder. Hey, you know, I kind of feel bad for her now. Ha 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 ha! What? Are you on crack? 
that little idiot is a nobody. Who cares? Just hear me out. Maybe we should apologize to her and make a new friend. We can bring her with us, show her how to cut loose. Maybe she isn't as lame as she looks, eh? Hope gave her brother a curious look, but when she saw the shark-like grin on his face, she began to understand. Hey, yeah, that's not a bad idea. My brother, the bleeding heart, she mocked, mirroring his grin. Julie was wiping the tears off her face and was about ready to walk out the door. Butch ran up and grabbed her by the shoulder, making her quickly recoil. Hey, wait a minute, I just wanted to apologize. We didn't mean to make you feel so bad. Oh, don't worry, it's okay, she replied, attempting to give a cheeriest smile. Listen, we actually think you are kind of cool, and we were talking. After this, we're going to go hang out and listen to some music. We would like you to go with us if you ain't too mad. Thanks, but I really should get going anyway. It's late and I don't have any more money. That's okay, yelled Hope, running over. We still have plenty of money and maybe I can teach you a thing or two about beauty. Maybe get you a new style. What do you say? Please, it would really mean so much to me. Julie really didn't want to be around them any more than she already had been, but she had a hard time telling people no. On top of that, she seemed to genuinely want her company, so she reluctantly agreed. Awesome! Twins yelled, smacking each other's hand as well as Julie's. This made her smile and actually feel like she belonged a little bit. Wait over there for us to finish up and we'll get a move on, okay? Yeah, no problem, she replied with a smile. Time went by as Julie waited faithfully in the corner. Part of her wanted to just leave, but she couldn't stand the thought of being rude, even to these guys. It honestly didn't even bother her as much as it should, having to watch them play with her hard-earned money. In fact, as a glass half full kind of girl, she decided it was a good thing and was happy for them. In time, they grew bored and asked her if she was ready. She eagerly nodded and they made their way into Kevin's van and off to the gas station. Kevin went in, leaving Julie surrounded by them. The radio blared some sort of rap. She was never into the genre and always found it incredibly awkward to be in its vicinity. Kevin got back in with a 30 pack of beer and a bottle of cheap vodka, all of which was all purchased with the remainder of Julie's money. Then they were all off once more. So where are we going? Julie asked. There's this cool little place up in the woods, just past Clifford Park. It's a bit of a walk, but well worth it, said Stephen. Yeah, it's supposed to be this really old church that was abandoned in like the 1600s or whatever. We like to hang out there and party, said Hope. You do like to drink, right? Oh. Um, I don't really... Oh, come on, are you really telling me you're not going to have at least one drink with us? After we've been so nice to you and got that bottle of vodka just for you? Asked Tamika from behind. No, I guess one won't hurt, she reluctantly agreed. That's a girl, yelled Stephen as his fish shot out and hit Julie in the breast. It was a little harder than playful, and she flinched, making everyone laugh. Don't you need boobs for it to hurt? joked Hope from the front. Butch proceeded to open up the 30 pack and hand one out to everybody. Julie took hers hesitantly and popped it open. 
The smell was awful and she sipped what she could without throwing up. It was a miserable few minutes and at last they pulled into the dark parking lot at the edge of the woods. You barely took a sip and I'm not going to let you waste beer, Kevin said, giving a suggestive glance back towards her. She knew what he wanted her to do and pinching her nose she drank as much of the can as she possibly could. It wasn't so bad without her ability to smell but when she took her fingers away she instantly retched up what she just swallowed. What the fuck? All over my van? Really? Kevin yelled. He and everyone else got out laughing at her. I'm so sorry, she tried to say while getting out herself. The taste that lingered in her mouth made her throw up once more on the ground. They all found this hysterical and they laughed even harder when Stephen and Tamika threw mostly empty cans at her head. That's disgusting! What did you eat? Dog food? said Hope. It smelled so bad! Better watch out, she might shit herself next! yelled Butch. Aw, oh, can't handle your booze! Tamika mocked. Don't worry, you'll feel better when we get to where we're going. Yeah, but first you're going to clean up my van, said Kevin. Do you have any napkins, or... No, I don't have any napkins. What the hell do I look like? A waiter at Denny's? Just use your hands. She hurried over to the floor of the back seat and tried to scoop as much as she could out. When she was finished, she looked to Kevin for approval. It's still soaked in there. Go ahead, use your shirt. Julie looked down and hesitantly pulled at the bottom of her white garment. She just couldn't do it though, so instead she struggled to pull at her sleeves. She managed to tear them off unevenly, but at least she didn't have to show them her body. This seemed to satisfy Kevin and she dropped the soiled cloth to the ground. Despite there not being a cloud in the sky, it seemed to get darker. They made this walk dozens of times however, so it was no large task finding their way. The walk was miserable for Julie and it felt like the trail went on forever. All she wanted to do was go home and nurse her aching stomach, but since she was already this far, she might as well see it through. The walk only took about 20 minutes and a massive grey building finally came into view. It stood well above the tree line, commanding attention. Large stones littered the area in front of the gated cemetery and a chill went down Julie's spine. It felt as if they were intruding upon a forbidden place, a taboo in which they were not welcome. The group trudged through the clearing without a second thought. Butch set a portable CD player on a stone next to the remaining beer and hit play. Some kind of rap started playing and everyone began to hoot and dance. They all poured drinks and forced Julie to drink more, assuring her it would be easier the more she consumed. The beer didn't become any more appetising and the vodka only made her already burning throat sting worse. She had a very low tolerance though and the things quickly became a blur. Come here Julie, I want to do your makeup for you, yelled Hope. Julie was in no position to refuse and stumbled through the gate of the ancient graveyard. Hope and Tamika sat her down on top of an old tomb and began the process both of them cooing over her natural beauty and how she was actually kind of a hottie. Ten minutes later they were finished. They both whistled and raved over just how amazing their work was. Is it really that good? Julie asked. Are you kidding? You could totally have any guy you wanted right now, 
replied Hope. I know I'm not going to be showing you off to my man, said Tamika. Julie lit up upon hearing these compliments. With the alcohol running through her system, she began to feel okay with her new friends. Maybe they weren't so bad after all. They walked her back to the front of the building, yelling out, Hold on to your pants, boys! we got a real babe with us now! Ah! Oh, they all yelled and laughed as the girl came into view. That's a real good look for you, bozo! Butch called out. I didn't know makeup could look so good on a piggy, yelled Stephen. Take a look, said Hope, and she held a mirror up to Julie's face. White foundation plastered her face and thick blue eyeshadow caked all around her eyes. Her lips and cheeks were dramatically overdone with red and written across her forehead were the words, Slam Pig. The makeup ran down her face along with her tears as she cried. The optimism she had held for the group made her heart snap and she quickly made her way back to the trail. She wasn't able to get very far however as a very drunk Kevin grabbed her arm. She screamed and pulled but he was just too strong and he dragged her over to the entryway of the ruined church. Don't worry little slam pig I'll still give it to you. The others laughed and cheered as they followed him in through the rows of broken, rotting pews. A stone table on a raised platform stood at the end with an enormous wooden cross that had fallen lopsided long ago, and he dropped her onto it. He and the others ripped at her clothes. Each attempt to get away would be met with a hard blow to the face, or somewhere else on her body. When she was stripped naked, the guys took turns violating the poor girl. Julie's mind raced and it all went by in a blur, yet painfully slow. Eventually they were finished and they just began to beat on her. Fists, large pieces of wood and even heavy chunks of stone rained down, turning her face and her body into a bloody mess. She could feel bones no longer connected to where they should, and she just didn't have the strength to roll away anymore. She could still hear them laughing at her misery, and a few horrible things about her being a slut, but she had no fight left. They were ready to move on with their night, but before leaving, Kevin took one of the stained chair legs and drove the jagged end into her stomach. Spitting in her ruined face one last time, he followed the others back outside. Julie lay on the cold slab and with every throb of pain she could feel the life leaving her body. Through her broken thoughts, a voice came to the forefront of her mind. You poor, poor girl. I only wanted friends, she thought in response. Such a shame. You didn't deserve this, my child. Please, help me. I'm afraid it's too late. The damage is done. There is something I can offer you, however. What's that? Even the voice in her head was becoming tired now. Revenge. A promise that they will never again get away with their terrible deeds. All I need is your soul. That sounds good. Do we have a deal then? Yes, Th they raped me. They killed me. Don't spare a single one. Done. Go now into darkness, my child. It is time to rest. Thank you, was her last thought before everything faded away. Kevin's group was now outside, finishing off the rest of the beer and vodka. They were cheering about the misery they just inflicted upon the lonely girl, and didn't show a single ounce of remorse towards it. In fact, Kevin exclaimed that he was thinking about going for one more round with her. 
Then they noticed the sky. Dark clouds were rolling in faster than anyone thought possible. A harsh wind blasted through the trees as the rumbles of thunder boomed off in the distance, quickly getting louder by the second. They might not have cared too much and just left. However, terror now struck at the heart of each one. A deep clang rang out from above them as the old bell came to life. It would reverberate for a moment, then die into nothing, only to be followed up with another clang. Each new clang seemed to invoke a feeling of doom with every strike, and they finally saw why. The ruined body of Julie slowly walked out of the building. Lightning now joined the sound of thunder as every toll of the bell shook the very earth below them. Bolts began to streak down close by, illuminating her face. It was expressionless, calm even, and the eyes that were now black pits took the group in, giving nothing in return. Fuck this! yelled Stephen, and he started to run back towards the trail. Julie's feet rose up off the ground, and she shot over to the front of the terrified thug. His escape was cut off, and he began to turn back. Her swollen hand reached out and around his throat, squeezing it hard. With a strength she couldn't possibly have possessed, she crushed his windpipe like an empty beer can. She dropped him to the ground, and his hand scratched at his throat, his nails digging into his skin in a vain attempt to breathe. It was effectively closed off by the collapsed meat and cartilage though, and soon the colour on his face turned an ugly red, and his bulging eyes gazed upon nothing. Rain began to fall as the storm raged on. The others were running for the safety of the church, Hope trailing behind. She almost made it to the archway when she slipped on the wet leaves that covered the stone steps. She struggled to crawl up the rest of the way when Julie's cold hand grabbed her by the shoulder and threw her onto her back. White lightning sprang brightly as it split the night, forcing her to stare into the horrible face of the girl she painted as a clown only an hour ago. As Julie's ruined mouth opened into a bloody grimace, a bolt of lightning streaked down, nailing her body. Her skin sizzled and cooked along with a makeup which turned a dark black. Now, instead of a clown, it gave the appearance of death itself. This was the last thing Hope saw. Another bolt screamed down, and Julie took Hope into a firm embrace. Even as the amps of electricity ran through her, all the remaining air pushed out of her lungs, and she gave one last vibrating scream. Her rigid corpse fell to the steps, and Julie continued to the building. The two brothers were cowering behind the altar she was murdered on. Her blackened body sailed through the church, leaving a trail of thick smoke in her wake. As she approached, Kevin threw Butch out towards her, and she lifted him high towards the roof. Kevin and Tamika watched on as his head got stuck between two large beams. She began to levitate back down but grabbed and pulled his kicking legs with her. He screamed louder as the stress on his body increased, and that scream reached new heights as the skin on his neck started to rip away. Blood rained down as she gave one final pull, ripping the spine out of his back. His head remained up above, still giving a silent howl, and she turned her attention to the two monsters that still lived. I'm sorry, please don't kill me, screamed Tamika, who began running for the door. That would not be allowed. Her arms cracked 
as she raised them up. Wood and stones from all around lifted with them. They shot out like hundreds of daggers, all of which pushed through Tamika's body. She lay on the ground, coughing at blood as she slowly died. It took longer than she deserved, and she still had the ability to speak. But please, I don't want to die. I'm, I'm too young. There was no emotion on what remained of Julie's face. She looked up to the statue of a cherub that seemed to watch from above. Through similar unknown means, the statue was dragged out and fell hard to the ground. There was one quick thud as it crushed her body, and now there was only one, Kevin. He had escaped through a window in the back and thought he was safe. How wrong he was. Lightning continued to flash all around the sky as he made his way to the gate of the cemetery. A low rumble came from the ground, and the earth around him began to explode. Ancient coffins rocked the area, forcing him to stop. Their skeletal occupants reached out and locked their bony fingers around Kevin's legs and began to pull. His screams were muffled as he was slowly pulled underground. More hands reached up and grabbed at him, some of them massive and clawed, and his desperate cries for help fell upon deaf ears. There would be no help, only an eternity of punishment. It took a while, but the storm was already clearing. The first rays of sun were showing off in the distant horizon. The destroyed body of Julie Mizrachi sat upon the stone slab of the church. Next to it, another spirit appeared. It was Julie herself. As promised, they will never harm another soul. That's good. Thank you very much. Is it time to go to hell with you now? The thing wearing Julie's body smiled and shook its head. My child, hell is for the wicked. And after all, you promised your soul to me, Radel. You will still have to go with me, but we will be going to the other place. Tears formed in the corners of Julie's ghostly eyes, and she slowly faded away. Her empty shell of a body lay upon the stone altar, and went still forevermore. Another sunny morning came as the church stood silently in the forest. Peace was once again the heavy blanket that shrouded this place. Nature began its work once more, and slowly eased its burden from the world. Don't forget, if you enjoyed that story, be sure to pop over to the author's Reddit profile and drop them a line. Or even give them a glowing review. I'm sure they really would appreciate it. The link to their Reddit profile will be below in the description. Please be so kind as to throw punch the like button and smack the ass of the subscription button as well. And remember to tap the notification bell and then select all. That way you'll receive all notifications each time I upload a new video. Oh, and don't forget to share the video far and wide. This will all help with YouTube's algorithm and will help to promote this channel more. And don't forget to check out the merch store. The link will be in the description and also in the video thumbnail. And if you would like an honourable mention, send in a snapshot of yourself with your purchase and I'll feature it in one of the videos. I now have my very own subreddit community where you can submit any stories you've written. You can submit your stories or encounters either there or send them to cryptidsroost at gmail.com. If you wish to remain anonymous, that's fine with me. All the links are below. I also have a Facebook group, Twitter, Reddit, and you'll also find me on Discord. If you would like to support this channel and help make it grow, my PayPal is paypal.me slash cryptidsroost. Again, that will also be below.